and um, it'll be available. Right there it goes. And um, so it'll be recorded and available on Core Alberta. <clears throat> Core Alberta is a great organization that's an online resource for education, networking, um, capacity building in your communities. It's a Healthy Aging Alberta initiative, and you should really join and get great emails and newsletters and all sorts of cool stuff from them. And uh, I want to go into our land acknowledgement before we get much further. So we wish to acknowledge that the land on which we gather in treaty, is Treaty 6 territory, which is a traditional meeting ground and home for many Indigenous peoples, <clears throat> including the Blackfoot, Cree, Soto, Stony, and the Métis Nation. I'd like you to take a moment to acknowledge the land on which you gather, because it may not be Treaty 6, you were spread out all over the place. So just a moment. You could even put it in the chat if you wish. And uh, then we will move. Sorry, go ahead. Was somebody adding in something? Oh, we got lots of people writing in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, so the agenda for the day is, uh, we'll be introducing our team. We'll be watching a quick video. We will have three speakers, question and answer period. If we have time, we will have breakout rooms and then we'll do a quick wrap up. Do you wanna click Betty? Thank you. So this is our team for the intergenerational community of practice. We'll start with Betty who linked us all together. She works with Linkages Society in Calgary, uh, me, <laughs> and then uh, Jody Wood who's with the Minister of Seniors and Housing. Cindy, and I'm not gonna say your name properly, last name. Uh, she's with a provincial community developer with Healthy Aging Alberta, and she's an, our amazing tech support. And we have Corey Ladwig, who will just be joining us in a few moments from the County of Grand Prairie FCSS and Charlene Fletcher, who's the therapeutic recreation and gerontology student. So she's doing practicums and all sorts of cool stuff. So thanks for joining all of us here. And we will play the video now. The teachers have been done. Is it clicking? Oh, Can there we go. Thank you. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear heart. Happy birthday to you. Yay! How old are you? How old are you today? 92. 92. 92nd, 92nd birthday. Ready? One. Okay, so now um, there'll be a link to the multimeter in your chat. So if you can click that and put right in your response, one or two words about what did that video stir inside of you? We've got happiness, blessed, joy, warmth, caring, amazement. Oh, more joyful, connection, love. Oh, what's that little one? I can't tell. <laughs> this is hard, they're moving. <laughs> uh, warmest relationship, uh, warmest relationships, strength. Spirit, joyful spirit, amazement, love, celebration, fun, it's like the warm fuzzy feeling the words. <laughs> Can we get everybody put in something? I think we have most of everyone. So I see in the corner here, 13 out of 25 participants. So. Okay, that's pretty good. So it seems to be an overall feeling of just like that warm heart swelling, happy moment of all the connection between the kids and the man who was lucky enough to make it to 92, that's awesome.
Okay, so I will now turn it over to Betty, who I made it in my 10 minute window <laughs> to introduce our speakers. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Good job. Okay. Um, so we are fortunate to have three speakers today. The first, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to say all of their names right now. And then as they come up, I'll give you a formal introduction. Well, as formal as I can be. So we have Leanne Parks, who's a vice principal at St. Gregory School in Cal Calgary. And then we're going to have Jocelyn Rempel, She's an associate prof at Mount Royal University and chair in older adult health. And Lois Ferris, she has a mutual mentoring group and she is with Life Transitions Associates. So let me tell you about Leanne. She's the vice principal at St. Gregory's School, which is a vibrant junior high school with the Calgary Catholic School District. St. Gregory has been a long-standing partner with Linkages Society in Calgary, who is partnered with, um, their school is partnered with Royal Park Care Center, which is a Care West Care Center. So I'm going to let her tell you about what they are, what they had actually planned and did for Lent, and now what they're going to do for IG Day. So Leanne, go ahead. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Betty. And it's my um, privilege to be here today. And it's an unexpected place for me to find myself today, having gotten involved more by accident than by intention with linkages and coming to know and understand the importance of intergenerational relationships. So our school has been a longtime partner with linkages, as Betty had said, and many, many students have benefited and speak fondly of the times they get to go visit some senior friends at um, our Care West Centre. And of course, we know that's had many disruptions due to COVID, and we've missed many visits in the last two years. Jump ahead this year, um, the teacher that was overseeing Linkages just retired, and that's how Linkages kind of fell into my plate as an administrator here. And as we were talking in the winter, we always, as a Catholic school, identify a, a charity focus to fundraise and bring awareness during Lent leading up to Easter. And we discussed many different opportunities and many different worthy causes for supporting. But the sentiment within our community of caring group was that we wanted to focus on the experiences that seniors had had, particularly the challenges faced uh, during the last two years of the pandemic. So we made our fundraiser and our charity focus all about supporting a linkages specifically here. It was a bit of a hard sell. And I'll, I'll say the expression I said to the staff, I said, for young kids, the topic of old people is not very sexy. So how do we get our students, 12, 13 and 14 year olds, uh, connected with this idea of how can we support this very important group of people in our society and what's in it for us too. So our Lent journey uh, was a challenge for every homeroom class to come up with a way to fundraise just for linkages. And Betty, we're just finaling, finalizing our few dollars still coming in. She'll share that news with you in the next week or so. Um, but the students uh, got to know in that experience, why did we look towards an intergenerational piece? Like, where's the value in that? And the sell for the students is we talked about, well, there's seven generations of, of people living today. We're all a uh, part of the story of, of our societies and how are we the same and how are we different? So the students did jump on board. Uh, we uh, Each class had a variety of different things that they did from bake sales to um, guessing jars to hat day to a sport day and competitions. And uh, that was really wonderful. But in the end, we never made a single relationship with someone intergenerational through that. We just did that within our school. So when we were speaking, Betty and I, we said, you know, wouldn't it be nice though to actually experience an intergenerational opportunity, not just fundraise for something that's kind of out there. And it was through the National Intergenerational Day that Betty suggested, well, there's an opportunity or there's a day that as a nation we are bringing awareness to being intergenerational. 
We brought that back to the school and we thought uh, that we all need to benefit from intergenerational relationships and we naturally are intergenerational simply by the families we come from, from younger siblings through to parents or grandparents. So what can we do to bring awareness to that and then to kind of show some appreciation and an invitation to our friends at the Care West, Royal Park Care West place. So the idea of a barbecue um, was born out of that. So we are uh, going to host a school-wide barbecue on June 1st, National Intergenerational Day. And we're stealing the topic, the theme, Betty, from your last day of linkages for our students, the Together Again a motto, and that's a part of our, our promotion of this event. But it's a junior high school, and in order to get students and parents to dedicate a few hours in an evening to come out to this event, we thought, what do we need to do to A, encourage uh, community that night at the event, not just come and have a hot dog, but what can we be doing? And let's include our linkages seniors that night. So our intergenerational barbecue night is going to have many um, events and activities that we hope throw uh, a shade of why we're doing it on international intergener intergenerational day, pardon me. So of course we're starting with the barbecue with hot dog chips and drinks, but uh, when you arrive to our barbecue, you're going to see a large poster display board that explains the qualities of the seven different generations of living today. And who doesn't love talking about themselves? So you'll get a name tag that uh, will say, I'm a boomer or I'm you know, Gen Z or I'm a Gen Alpha. And we're hoping that alone is going to kind of spark some discussion and connections as our community hasn't been together in two years. So we need this togetherness as much as, as our senior friends and everybody else. So we're gonna identify ourselves by our generational uh, group that we are in. And what else are we going to do on that on that uh, that day? So we're going to develop mixer cards. Those have already been made, where there'll be a door prize if you find someone who. And we're hoping people will fill out their card, meet someone new, and then enter for a door prize. So, for example, find someone who learned how to type on a real typewriter. Uh, find someone who knows how to drive a standard. Find someone who's listened to a pod a podcast. Find someone who used to have a flip phone or who used a rotary phone. So we'll have questions like that. And the goal will be that people come and mix and mingle within our families, also with our invited guests from uh, the Royal Park Care West Centre. So that's one thing. We uh, wanted to think about uh, atmosphere also at that event and some traditional games that could be played. So we're simply having bocce ball, maybe ladder golf, croquet, and just having these available for families to come and interact with each other. We'll have sidewalk chalk and bubbles because we're hoping that this intergenerational family event will also bring in some younger students too, some uh, young siblings. And our band is going to complete a performance um, in the evening and they'll have some old tunes and some new tunes and just bringing that presence to our, our group there. We're also uh, having two, play, two special parts where our seniors, we hope, can participate in, a, in an enhanced way. One of them is an art walk. So in our Learning Commons library, we're gonna be setting up art walk of our students and other projects that they've um, worked on this year. But an invitation will go out to our senior friends at Royal Park if they themselves have any art or crafts that they can just, um, let us use that evening to be part of the art walk too. So maybe we've got some quilters or crocheters or woodworkers or painters or, or drawers that we can put some of their pieces on display. And then it's an intergenerational event of student work, but also some senior work. Uh, what better way to celebrate intergenerational traditions than by passing down recipes? But we're doing it nouveau style. We're doing a digital cookbook of handed down recipes. So that's already been uh, open to our families that if they have a recipe that's been handed down from another generation, if they would please share that recipe and tell us a little bit about who passed that recipe on to them. But in the modern world, we're just doing this through Google Forms and uh, there's 
mostly going to be only a digital format of this cookbook that gets redistributed into our community. But of course, we'll make a few hard copies and make sure our senior friends get a hard copy too, if that's their preference. And our uh, seniors today are going to get an invitation to see if they have a recipe that they could write out this week and return to us next week that we can add to this cookbook. And then we're doing finally a cakewalk. Um, cakewalk, if you've participated in one before, goes back to the uh, older days of uh, festivals and, and probably church picnics where uh, cakes are donated. And uh, it's like a musical chair game. You buy a ticket for the chance to participate. We'll have uh, 10 numbers or 10 seats marked out. And everyone, when they purchase a, a dollar ticket, will get the chance to join the circle, the music will play. And uh, everyone will walk around the circle until the music stops, then you pick a new number and they'll draw a number from a hat. And whoever has that number on their chair will be able to go and pick a, a cake off of the cake table that's been just donated by our community. So we're excited about this. Um, we hope to have a response from young siblings all the way to grandparents within our community and to have special guests, our Linkages friends come out that night also to be guests of honor, to celebrate a year together, whether it was on again, off again, off again with some restrictions, but to end our year together and the opportunity for us to live the experience of the benefit of being intergenerational um, in addition to having just supported it through a fundraising a fundraising initiative. So Betty, we look forward to seeing you out there that night too. And of course, to at that night, we're gonna hand over the check for what we were able to raise during, during our, Lenten, our Lenten challenge. Leanne, and I have to tell you, our whole staff is gonna be there and I'm sure some of our board members will come because we are so excited we have all these programs and um, how often do we actually get um, schools or care centers to celebrate this on a bigger level like you're doing? It's great. And it's interesting too, as we speak, your students are on their way to the care center to meet with their senior friends right now. That, so. is, that is the funny part today. I had to get someone to do the attendance and um, they are bringing over to each senior like um, the invitation today uh, with a, a special letter that invites them to the art walk and the, um, yeah, there was a recipe and a, a recipe card. So we don't know where it, what it's gonna look like completely when everyone arrives on June 1st, but we sure hope that we have a very special event. But as we've said, it's a benefit for everyone this is mutually um, beneficial for our community, for your seniors community. Uh, I think it's just a win-win as long as the weather stays sunny that night. Well, it's Calgary. So between six and eight, it will not rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions from anybody for Leanne? Don't put your hand up because I can't see everybody. So just to speak out. No or questions, comment. just a comment. It sounds like a great event, Leanne. And that all happens on June the 1st, right? Like during the day, I'm assuming? Okay. It'll be an evening event. Uh, so okay. Six to eight. So um, that was one of the decisions. Did we want to do it just a, a school day event or an evening event? And, and when we make it evening, then it can include parents and siblings and grandparents. Um, if it's only during the day, it's really restricted to a smaller number. So our school really needs to be together again with each other. So it really is serving uh, many needs here. And we just uh, hope that our families can also bring some of their connections to come to our community that night to spend yeah. some time together. Makes me want to drive down to Calgary. Thanks a lot. There'll be a hot dog. <laughs> Leanne, are you encouraging the students to um, bring their grandparents or aunts and uncles? So the invitation from young siblings up to grandparents was included in the, in the information going out. So uh, yes, um, we're not sure what our response is. It's really too soon um, with the event being June 1st. We are asking for an RSVP because we do have to uh, pre-order some food. 
and we've got um, Sign Up Genius for volunteers. We've got Google Forms for making a cake and confirming your numbers and uh, another Google Form for contributing recipes. So uh, quite a few things behind the scenes. And then several students in our school are actually uh, taking some leadership role. The, the invitation was made by a student in our media arts class. We will have student volunteers that night also. Um, our questions for that, find someone who, and our, intergen our generational poster descriptions of, of each generation, those were made by uh, students or some teachers. So we're spreading it out to also encourage, um, encourage more participation. Awesome. Carolyn, I noticed you had your hand up. Do you have a question or a comment? <laughs> I did, but I put it in the chat. I was just going to say, could I suggest that you have some veggies and water instead of pop and sugary drinks and everything else for, um, for everyone? But it sounds, the ideas, the activities sound absolutely wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Let's hope so. And yeah, we are becoming quite conscious of making sure that what we're providing people is, is not too sweet. So for sure there'll be uh, water choices available, bottled water too, or, or healthier drink choices. Any other questions, comments? Well, we'll, we'll that sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on our Twitter that night, see how, see how it is. And it's on our website, the information right now. So um, yeah, we've never done this. Let's uh, let's see how it goes. This, of course, comes with a bit of risk because there's uh, no guarantee on who's who's going to uh, confirm that they're coming. But by making it have a variety of activities, we're hoping it it feels like a special special event for our families. And our band will be performing, so I think we'll get a some reasonable attendance, and it'll be special for whoever can make it that night. That's awesome. Thank you, Leanne. And Thank you. For participants, this sounds like a, a huge event, but hopefully you can take away some of the ideas and do this on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Or if you are have connections with a school or a community center, you can collaborate with them. And just, you know, it can be as small as having a few families or having a block party and doing this, but really encouraging the intergenerational part. Okay, last call for questions and then Leanne has to slip out. Leanne, I'm so glad that you took time out of your day because I know how busy it is in a school this time of year. Well, for you being the vice principal, it's always busy. So for you to take time out, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Betty. It was, it's nice to share uh, share the story and, and uh, maybe it'll give an idea or two. We, we just brainstormed ideas that just started from nothing. So hopefully yeah. um, we will have a really wonderful event. So thank you, Betty. And thank you, everyone. Good luck with your, your um, meeting today. Thank you. And, and I'm also thinking, you know, when you have a program in your school, you probably don't realize how big intergenerational programs or just the concept of intergenerational relationships are. So this people here today are from all over Alberta. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if some are from other province, but from all over Alberta. So this is great. Gay Leanne, thank you. And sorry, I'm covering a math class here in about 10 minutes. Yep. So thank you. Yep. Okay. I will That's go. Good. good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Leanne. Okay, let me introduce Jocelyn. And Jocelyn is going to share her PowerPoint in a second. She is an experienced gerontological nurse and has been teaching at Mount Royal University since 2006. She's driven by a strong desire to promote better care for older people and has become a noteworthy leader in her field. Her research interests include aging in place, promoting quality of life for older people, and dispelling ageist views towards the aging population. So Mount Royal University has partnered with the Calgary Association of Lifelong Learners to start an intergenerational speaker series. And it's geared towards promoting lifelong learning and the formation of intergenerational relationships. So um, 
Jocelyn, you also said the series is one step in making MRU campus more age friendly. So you take over and tell us all about it. Sure. I'll just start my slides here. Okay. Good. Well, thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing what we're, we're, we're planning to do over the next year. Um, uh, like Betty said, I, I have been teaching at Mount Royal for the last 15 years or so, and I recently came into a new position called Chair in Older Adult Health. So uh, this, this role has been excellent. It's been fantastic uh, for me, and I think um, I'm hoping for for the Mount Royal community and even the broader community as well. Uh, so this role was formed because we, we received some external funding from one of our donors who saw what was happening to older adults during the pandemic and said, you know, this is not acceptable. We need to improve care for older people. So we received this money and then this chair position was, was formed and basically she, she tasked us with improving care for older adults. So um, I've been working on, on you know, revamping our curriculum a little bit and trying to integrate some competencies that that teach our nursing students how to care for older adults properly. But then um, I'm also trying to reach out to our broader community at Mount Royal and and um, beyond. And um, one of the um, one of the events that I had, I just it just actually occurred yesterday. So we're going to be doing an age inclusive symposium every year. Um, so we had our first event yesterday, which went very well um, and we discussed you know ageism and and how why ageism exists and then also how we can make our university maybe a little more age in inclusive so um, i am trying so we started this intergenerational speaker series um, or we're in the in uh the beginning stages of planning this intergenerational speaker series so this is what I want to speak about today uh, and just kind of where we're at the process and also just ask some questions um, to everyone who's here today. So uh, this, um, this speaker series was, um, I, I met someone from the Calgary Association of Lifelong Learners through, um, through one of the, one of, a student actually at Mount Royal and we, uh, came together and we came up with this idea um, and Silvera was actually a part of this as well uh, just some of the ideas that that initiated this this series so um, it's it's an inter intergenerational speaker series uh, that we are going to uh, be including four different speaker series over the next academic year so we're just in the initial stages of planning um, for this series uh, I'm just gonna um, I did want to recognize, uh, I just want to do a brief land acknowledgement, just that uh, Mount Royal University is located in Calgary, Alberta, and the traditional territories of Blackfoot and the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Siksika, Kani, Kainai, and Sutina, and the IRA, Nakoda. We are situated on the land where the Bow River meets the Elbow River. The traditional Blackfoot name of this place is Mokintis which we now call the city of Calgary, also home to the Métis Nation. So I just want to recognize uh, just the land that Mount Royal is, is located on. Okay. Okay, so just, uh, just to provide a little bit of background. So uh, CAL, or Calgary Association of Lifelong Learners, is a nonprofit organization in Calgary. Uh, it's it's uh, incorporated under the Societies Act of the province of Alberta. And CALL's mandate is to help facilitate lifelong learning um, for people who are interested in lifelong learning in the Calgary area. So they don't target specific populations, but most of their members are of retirement age. So they're people who've retired, who, are, who still wanna be uh, involved in lifelong learning um, as they age. Uh, so they um, they are a nonprofit, uh, but they do have a membership fee of fifty dollars per year, and they have several different events that occur throughout the year uh, for their members. Um, and then Mount Royal, so we're in the initial stages of trying to make our university more age inclusive and age diverse. Um, our population tends to be quite young, uh, you know, be, between the ages of twenty and twenty five. I'd say is is probably the average average age of our population at Mount Royal. Um, so I'm trying with this role that I'm currently in and with this series is to really bridge that gap between old and young. And I think we all know that, you know, that 
there, there isn't a lot of connection between older and younger generations. Uh, and just an example of this, I mean, I've, I've had a student who told me that she was completely fearful of having to take care of older people um, as a nursing student. And, and I just, I, I feel like I need to do something about that. Um, and the reason she's fearful is because her only encounter with an older adult was with her grandmother who had severe dementia. Um, so this was her perception that she developed um, around older people that all older people present this way, which is obviously not true. Uh, and, and there just seems to be a greater divide uh, between older and young, younger people. And, and of course, um, through this project, I'm hoping we'll be able to kind of bridge that gap a little bit. Um, so this intergenerational speaker series, um, like I mentioned, is going to be occurring over the next ac academic year. So our first event will occur in September and then end in, in April. Our last event will occur in April. So uh, we, we did receive some funding for this series uh, and it'll help us, you know, move forward with, with this event. Um, and we, we were able to, to hire one part-time coordinator um, who's from Child Studies. I believe she's here today. Emma, are you? I think Emma's here today. She's our part-time coordinator. She's been fantastic um, in helping us organize um, our meetings and, and just move forward with obtaining some information through surveys uh, with what we, um, with information that we need for this series. So uh, we have a part-time coordinator. We have five students, student volunteers, six older adults volunteers, and then two communication and marketing uh, people on our committee as well. So the committee was actually only supposed to be 10 people, but um, you know, we had a lot of interest so far. So I, I had a hard time saying no. And um, so we for formed a very rich committee. And I, I think, um, you know, that'll help with our planning as we move forward with these with these four events. Uh, and our students, we have some nursing students, a child study students, and also policy students as well. So we have some diversity there amongst our students. Um, our older adults consist of uh, a retiree from Mount Royal, um, and then three members from Call, and then also two other um, older adults from the broader um, community. And then our communications and marketing um, volunteers, one is from Mount Royal, um, so we'll be helping us with that advertising plan. And then the other one is from the community who's worked on, on various events within the community um, with older adults. So if I just want to go through the purpose of this series um, and what we're looking at. So, I mean, we really want to promote lifelong learning um, and continued engagement um, throughout life. So uh, here. Um, we want to obviously try to you know, promote intergenerational relationships. Uh, we, and we want to be very intentional about that. So we're with the speaker series, we're going to, we're going to have a speaker who's going to speak on a specific topic, but then afterwards we're going to have time to, to allow all the people who are participating to be able to discuss um, and hopefully form some kind of relationship with one another um, and get to and understand each other's perspectives. Um, so we do have facility facilitators that we are going to be hiring um, to hopefully help with those with those interactions. Um, we also want to uh, pilot this age inclusive um, event on the campus. Um, we don't have a lot of events that are intergenerational, if any, uh, really at our at, on our campus. So uh, this is a pilot project to try to increase our age friendliness, our age diversity and and our age inclusiveness um, at Mount Royal. Um, and then also part of the funding is to promote volunteerism amongst older adults and other generations. So um, part of the planning committee is is to promote that volunteerism uh, for um, for people. So for both students and older adults. Oops, sorry. Uh, so we've had our first initial meeting with the whole group. Uh, and, you know, I, uh, there was this part of me that thought, I don't, how are we going to come up with topics? Is this, this, I feel like this is going to be a difficult challenge for us to come up with topics that are relevant to those students and to, to older adults. But this actually proved to be quite easy. Uh, we came up with our topics quite, quite quite easily um, during our conversation or during our one meeting, during our conversation. Um, and these are four of the topics that we are thinking of, of moving forward with um, over the next year. And we've really tried to tie them with something with global events or national events that are occurring. Um, so the first one we're looking at indigenization. So looking at 
you know, what are different perspectives around this? Um, Cull is really interested in incorporating indigenization and decolonization into their programming. So I think, so they would like to understand how to do this. Uh, so that's gonna be our first event, which is going to be around September 30th, so Truth and Reconciliation Day. Um, our next event is gonna look at, you know, intergenerational working groups. How do you work in a team that has varying ages? And I think this one will be really important for our students in particular, because uh, oftentimes our, when we, I know as a professor, when I break them up into groups, they're, they're in groups with students. We don't really go beyond the classroom. So they learn to work with people of similar ages, but they don't often, we don't often set them up to work with um, uh, people of different ages or different generations. So we wanna explore that a little bit during that, that series. And then our third one is looking at mental health. So uh, we all know that I think loneliness and social isolation has really increased, um, especially during COVID and, and, and across all generations. So we wanna explore this and this is, we wanna do this around the, the Bell Let's Talk Day, which is in January. Um, and then the last event that we're looking at is environmentalism, which uh, we would like to do around Earth Day in April. Uh, and this one, I think we want, we want to explore different perspectives around environmentalism. Because um, the, the member who brought this, the committee member who brought this up, it was really interesting. And she's like, she prefaced her sentence by saying, you know, I don't want to sound ages, but I, these environmentalism or environmental and climate issues have been around for a long time, but sometimes I get the sense that, you know, the younger generation thinks that it's something new. This is something new that we've created when in fact this, these have been around for, for a long time, right? Since the 60s, 70s is when she remembered them being um, brought to her mind. So, so I thought that was an interesting perspective and I think it's really interesting maybe to discuss those different perspectives and, and you know, how we move forward with those perspectives. So um, that's gonna be our last um, topic. So just looking at anticipated outcomes for this, for the speaker series. Um, so again, I mean, I think we're, we're all aware that these, when we have intergenerational connections um, and relationships, ageism is typically de decreased, right? We have those connections, they understand, people understand one another, and we don't create these stereotypes and these prejudices against um, a population that we don't know much about. So we wanna reduce ageism. Um, we wanna support healthy aging, um, create another environment for older adults to be partic to participate in. And I should have mentioned like that these series, the speaker series is available for all older adults within, within Calgary. So we're working on our advertising strategy to try to reach out to different diverse groups um, and really include um, a variety of, of diverse groups um, with these speaker series, with the speaker series. Um, we want to address loneliness and social isolation. So that doesn't, it doesn't mean just for that one event um, in January, but also, you know, how can we address this through all the, all the events that we're going to host uh, throughout the year. Uh, and also, again, like I mentioned, I want to, our, I want our university to become more, become more age inclusive and age diverse. So I'm hoping that this series will help with that. Uh, so that's, I mean, those are the details of the, of the speaker series. I did have some questions for the audience today, uh, because this is something new, this is something we're piloting, uh, that we haven't done before. Um, if anyone has experience in intergenerational, um, uh, activities, if you've participated or if you've planned, uh, activity, intergenerational activities before, um, I wanted to get your thoughts around some strategies maybe for recruitment. So, you know, how do we recruit both students and older adults in the community? Um, how do, if you have thoughts around how we increase diversity for our speaker events? Um, and also how do we create an environment that's, that allows for relationships to be developed between, you know, students and, and older people, and then also be maintained beyond just the event. I think that's a crucial piece of this, of this um, series. Um, so maybe we can start with those and then maybe move on to the other ones. I don't know if anyone had any comments. Leanne, how would you like to do this? Do you want to them to comment in chat or just speak out and address some of these questions or both?
I know it's a lot of questions, but <laughs> and maybe we can leave it till after. But I, I just I just wanted to see if there's any thoughts or um, ideas. Just generate some conversation around that. Oh, Jody, I think did you have your hand up? I do. Yeah, I could offer um, maybe a connection just in case you're not aware of it. The Alberta Mentoring Partnership Group, and I'll put the link in the chat if you want. Okay, you don't have to write it down. Um, for your Indigenous focused event, they do have a staff person that is specifically focused on Indigenous oh, membership. So you may want to connect with her name is Tanya. I, I'll struggle with her last name to rang but i'll also put that in, in my note to you and also on our core discussion group for intergenerational matters there's a discussion thread where i've just added like programming ideas so you might want to skim through some of those links so those are just sure. suggestions so i'll okay. toss it in the chat now okay great thank you so much that's fantastic um Jocelyn, I have a question. Yeah. Um, when you say recruitment for both senior students and adults, are you looking for students and older adults for speaking? Or are you have you chosen the speakers? Uh, we, we have some ideas for speakers. I was the this question was more how do we how do we advertise? How do we get participation? So how do we so more participant strategies on on um, reaching out to the larger community, the older adult community, but also students. And how do we, how do we advertise so that there's buy-in so that people are interested in this event and want to, want to attend? Okay, so the, the event, anybody can attend it, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Lois has a question also. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see um, that. No, that's, would, that's okay. There she goes. I would Hi, like to add another topic to your series because okay. the uh, the opposite of the isolation and uh, uh, and lo and loneliness would be participation and engagement. So I would like a lot of focus on what people age sixty five to ninety five can do because it's kind of a new longevity, and I don't think we've ever addressed it. And we don't have enough role models to show people how normal it is for people to start businesses and second careers and part-time jobs and volunteers involvements and the rich um, things that they could do. So there isn't that uh, becoming a consumer and observer instead of a participant and contributor. So I would like to uh, suggest that you add that to your topics and, and um, put out some exciting views of what older people are doing after age 65. Yeah, you know, I think that's a great, great idea. You know, looking at, I mean, we're trying to take more of a strengths-based approach also at, at the university. And I think this is a great way to do that, right? I think, I think that would work perfectly with our, with that third event that we're having, the social isolation, even, you know, showing a different perspective. So thanks for that, Lois, that's really great. And enjoy your employer. I was in the counseling department at Mount Royal some oh. years ago. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> and loved it. Thank you. Well, I've been there 15 years so far and I'm, I'm, I don't have any plans to go anywhere quite yet. So <laughs> I'm enjoying it right now. Thank you, Lois. Uh, just a question. I just wondered how the event will look like, will people just gather, like, is it an in-person event or is it, um, yeah, You're so we will be like, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. We are planning to do in person if we can. Um, I think we, we depending on the COVID situation and what's right. happening, uh, we, we we're contemplating maybe doing a hybrid method as well. So maybe doing some online people can't, can't um, attend. Uh, we do want to, um, we do want to record each of the speakers. So then post that somewhere on a website that's, that's available to the public. Um, and, but again, like I think, the in-person piece is really important, especially for just connecting and making those relationships. And I think that's a that's one of the key aspects of this program. So I'm hoping we can do it in person. Um, and we're we're exploring different areas in the university because the university isn't always the most accessible, which is um, something that we're looking into and, and contemplating 
you know, how, how do we choose areas or, or spaces that are the most accessible and best uh, for, for all people? So I was just thinking if you do it in person, is there any way to do like a breakout groups where you could mix the generations together to discuss, you know, because that's one way to create those relationships that would be, could be carried on outside of the speaker series. Because I think what you're doing is awesome. Yes. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Shirley. <laughs> yes, we are. That was actually part of my proposal as well is, is you know, they're going to be intentional how we break up the groups because I think it's easy. It'd probably be easy if you have uh, a group of students who are there who know each other, though they'd probably stick together. So we're going to be very intentional on how we do the breakout room or breakout groups. And and we are going to have trained facilitators as well who are going to participate and, and help with that conversation um, during during those discussion pieces. So. So I'm hoping that will be successful. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. We have to be very intentional about how we how we split up the groups um, once we do go into those discussion groups. Uh, any other questions? Oh, Erin, did you have a question? Yeah, it's more just a comment and, and maybe this is already part of the plan, but something that came to mind um, is like maybe in addition to breakout rooms during, or not rooms, sorry, I'm so used to being online. <laughs> um, during the event itself, like really making sure to build something at the front end um, that's really about like kind of the getting to know you piece. And so I know not everyone likes icebreakers. I don't yeah. always love icebreakers either, but you know, I'm just thinking of like something like, you know, what, what are five things we all have in common and making sure there's a mix in each group. And that's really emphasizing from the front end um, that there's maybe more similarities and differences and just kind of mm -hmm. like building in the, the relationship building like throughout the event itself. Um, because then maybe that question around, well, how is that maintained um, will be more likely if you know, that's really like threaded throughout all of the events, like the theme of relationship building. So anyway, yeah. just some thoughts. I teach in social work. So I'm always thinking- Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, this is fantastic. Connections. So yeah. yeah. Thank yeah, you. No, that's great. And I even like the idea from the previous uh, presentation around, you know, find someone who who's listened to a podcast or listened to a record or I think that that's really interesting. Um, an interesting idea as well. So thank you, Erin. That's great. Any other questions or comments about um, about this series? I might just pose one more question if I have time. Um, we're looking at we're coming up with our evaluation plan currently and, and what are some key areas to evaluate. So I, if you have experience with, with programming, um, intergenerational programming, what were some takeaways that you would, that you, or some advice that you may provide to us when we are looking at our evaluation and, and what we should be asking for in our evaluation um, strategy? Kind of a big question i know <laughs> well i just know from school <laughs> when we were yeah. doing when we do program planning it was always the evaluation was to reflect back to our goals and objectives so always asking back did not only personally as a group that you'd meet and make sure that you met your goals and objectives but through your questions you could ask questions that reflect back to see if what you proposed was actually what they gained out of it so i mean I don't know. That's just one thing that comes to me only because it was, you know, um, strummed into my head for two years that <laughs> goals, yeah. objectives, and make sure the program <laughs> is if your program or what you're doing doesn't meet your objectives, then you haven't done what you wanted to do. So yeah, that's exactly. just my thought. I'm sure you already know that, but that was just you know, how we do it. No, that's helpful. It's always, it's always helpful to be reminded of that too, right? That we need to go back to where we started and, and what we intentionally planned for this event. So no, I think that's very helpful. Thank you, Shirley. Jocelyn, I have an idea. Yeah. What if yeah. you put your email address in the chat? Sure. And then if anybody comes up with any other ideas for you or if they have questions, they can email you. Okay. Sometimes so, I, sometimes I get yeah. have questions or ideas after the call. Sure. Yeah. So they That's might great. have some suggestions and then they can just email you. Okay. okay. That's great. Okay. Thank well, you. thank you everyone for listening. I appreciate it. And, and, you know, I'll, we'll, everyone is invited. So look out for our advertising over the next year, if you're interested in participating in any of the speaker events. So for your marketing, you can post your event on core. 
I, I think you're a member of our group, aren't, yeah. You, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that. So that was in part of our that's part of our plan to post. We just yeah. have to finalize all the details of it before we actually start advertising. But yeah, I'll certainly do that. That's exciting. I can hardly wait to come. Good. Yes. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again, Jocelyn, for taking time for for offering this because I had no idea this was happening. So this is great. And good ideas for all of us. You know, this is IG inspiration. We when we first started planning this, we were thinking IG day. And then we thought, you know what? Inspiration can be used any time of year or for any programs. And for IG day, you can use any of the ideas that you're, you're hearing, right? Okay, let me introduce Lois Ferris to you, our next speaker. So Lois found her source of joy and meaning in life very early to help others become the people that they were born to be. She began as a high school counselor and soon moved to career, career services for adults. At age 56, she started a company called Life Transitions. And at age 80, 92, she still does a few lifestyle planning presentations and appointments. She encountered ageism five years ago when she moved into a senior's residence. That shifted her focus to people aged 65 to 95 who lack role models for the new longevity. We need a new view of aging for the last third of our lives. It will be better for our health and benefit, uh, for our health and benefit the community and the economy if we avoid the stereotypes of aging and allow people to grow and contribute at every age. Lois, I am really looking forward to hearing from you as I'm sure everybody else is. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much. I'm uh, pleased to be here. And I guess at 92, it's good to be anywhere. Um, <laughs> and it's, it still is my joy to contribute the little bit I can. And you can see that uh, I've chosen the focus of the 65 to 95, the baby boomers, because they're such a large group of people and they could make such a great difference if they were uh, uh, not just observers and, and uh, consumers, but actually allowed to, to be who they were born to be because many of them would like to do things. I think I even saw a little thing on the news that a group of um, uh, a Rotary Club, I think it was in the uh, lower mainland, uh, the men decided, oh, there's such a shortage of workers in the fast food industry. So they decided they would work in the fast food industry and uh, for something to do, the people over 65, and then they would donate their wages to a cause. And they spoke about it as having such a good time doing it. They didn't have to work, but they just had a good time doing it. So I think allowing people choice and, uh, and showing them how much fun other people are having, uh, we would um, not only benefit the people 65 to 95, they'd have a lot more fun because I live in a place where people don't appear to be having a lot of fun growing old. So I think there's a, a place to make a difference. And, uh, and I think it would also make a difference to the economy. <clears throat> but now I have made some notes sort of to sort of keep me on, on track. But my main thing is to break the ageist stereotypes so people will have a choice at every age as to how they live their lives and participate. But just a little preamble about intergenerational before I talk about uh, mutual mentoring, which is the main thing that I wanna recommend to uh, everyone, intergenerational groups that are available that don't take a lot of organizing and collaboration and time. We've heard about substantial programs that require a lot of planning and organization, but mutual mentoring, you could all have your mutual mentoring group organized by the end of today. It's that immediate and that accessible for everybody. So um, it, it's, a, it's a kind of an option that would be so accessible and allow you to then have a mutual mentor while you start innovating these larger programs programs that take more, more planning. But the reason I, I just want to congratulate Linkages in having the program is I think it's so timely. In 2022, 
we have um, a situation where there's huge challenges with uh, world conflicts and climate. None of us could handle those alone. And then add on top of that, two years of COVID, which has been a, a real trauma for everybody. And we can't heal that amount of trauma with the counseling services that we have available. There just aren't enough one-on-one -on -one counselors to handle all the trauma in the world. So I really think uh, we need mutual mentoring groups so that people can do that for each other. And that's a, a new thing that I uh, have added on to the value. New, mutual mentoring, I think, was so people could uh, move forward and achieve their goals in life. But honestly, right now, they need help dealing the uh, trauma that's been caused uh, by the isolation of, of COVID. So it, it has another bigger purpose. And of course, with the longevity we've already mentioned, a time when a large number of people have 30 years that they hadn't planned for. I mean, it's fine to play golf and bridge for five years, but 30 is a bit much. So, you know, it, it's a little bit different when you encounter. And honestly, when I moved into a residence, I was shocked that people had lived here for 13 years in the same routine. It's just, just not a healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> and COVID has pointed the spotlight on that, that it's not a, a healthy lifestyle. So I think we're really looking at doing something radically different, starting with a little focus on home care, but radically different. So now I better get back to my notes or I won't deal with the topic. <clears throat> so um, with mutual mentoring groups, <clears throat> And here I want you to sort of pay attention to the thoughts you're having during this time together, because <clears throat> that's more important than what we say. <laughs> Although you can listen to what we say, but what it makes you think is really important because that's what's gonna make a positive difference to your life. So the mutual mentoring groups, um, the one that got me into this was I just happened to mention to Betty that I was in one that had three generations involved. And I hadn't really thought about that. I just knew it had to have diversity, but I hadn't thought about the intergenerations until I saw her little request for, for initiatives. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I've been involved in these groups uh, probably for 30 years or more. And in the 80s, um, uh, the group was sort of inspired by a book called Success Teams by uh, Barbara Scher, one of my favorite career planners. And she wrote the book Success Teams and how people get together in little groups and support each other in achieving their goals. And I, I took the idea, but I didn't like the idea of success. I just liked the idea of growth and development and being the person you were born to be. So I sort of called the mutual mentor groups. So there was no uh, older, younger, or one way mentoring. There was a reciprocal a mutual kind of mentoring. <clears throat> and the first group I formed was, or, or that we formed, we, it just sort of happened. Three of us decided to get together. And, uh, and uh, I think we only had three meetings and pretty soon two of them had quit very secure jobs and decided to travel for a year and went to retreat centers around the world. And, the, and that's two of them. And the third person, left Calgary and registered at McGill University. And I'm the only one left. So there's no group in Calgary anymore. But I went on to, to be part of other groups. And I do recommend that they remain dynamic, that uh, you form a group, <clears throat> any three to six people. <clears throat> and then they exist as long as they're effective. There's no point in meeting if it isn't a, making a positive difference to everybody's life. So you kind of review it every three months to say, you know, is this working for you, this time we're spending together, or uh, would your life be the same without it? Well, then let's not do it. So it works that way. And uh, you continue them as long as they're effective. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so the idea is sort of three, three to six people. And there needs to be a diversity. And if it's an age diversity, that's fine. 
uh, our group uh, that I'm in right now is um, uh, 27, a 32, 260-ish, and me at 92. And so we represent three generations when we meet, uh, but it, it could be any mix, but we do need diversity. So this isn't a thing where you just meet with your friends. You already have, have the benefit of their support. What we're wanting to do is add something to your life. <clears throat> so with Zoom, you can have a group that's anywhere around the globe. In fact, in one of my uh, book clubs that I do on Zoom, there's a lady from, New from um, Hawaii, and we've become uh, quite connected. We've even done a presentation together. And I was thinking if I ever move into another uh, mentor group, she might be part of it because we've become mentors to each other anyway, in terms of uh, discussing our goals and working together and, and supporting each other. So really it can be with Zoom, it can be anyone uh, around the world. And in the group I'm in, I think there's two of them that I haven't met personally yet. We're, we're two in Edmonton, one in Cochrane, and two here in Red Deer. So I, I've, I ha there's two of them that I haven't ever met face to face, but only on Zoom. And we've been meeting for about eight months. <clears throat> so there it is, the size of the group um, and the composition of the group. And then uh, review them every three months and they can keep keep going as long as they're uh, uh, beneficial and helpful to the people in them. And when they uh, lose their zip, you can go on and every, or anybody can drop out and uh, go to create another uh, association. Or um, uh, also uh, ours does have guests. We have practicum students that come as guests every once in a while. So it can be flexible. It can be whatever those three people or four people choose to have happen and choose to work. Now, informing the shared objective, that's a little bit, uh, a, a little bit important actually, and also a very good experience because there's quite a difference between a goal and a purpose. A goal is something the specific that you can achieve in a certain time and it's sort of measurable, but a purpose is something that um, can just last a whole lifetime. I think um, I was into Stephen Covey stuff in the 80s and I made a mission statement and my mission statement was I'm going to be long, I'm going to be involved in growth and development for myself and other people uh, as long as I live. And that purpose has has worked for the last 30 or 40 years because I'm still involved in growth and development for me and other people. Uh, whereas a goal I've had achieved many short-term goals in that time. And um, the, one of the last ones, I created an Options 45 program for people just before I left Calgary. So a goal is something kind of achievable and measurable, but a purpose is something that is behind your ideas and gives you a, an idea what to choose in terms of, uh, you know, it, life can get very, very busy uh, as I remember from a time in my life when I was doing my master's degree, still parenting two children and still working full time, it was pretty busy life. So you need something to keep you focused or you end up being busy. And as Covey said, you do the urgent things, but you never get to the important things. You're just busy surviving. So, <clears throat> so it's really important to have that um, sort of mentoring group that keeps you focused on who you are and who you're becoming and the sort of bigger picture and the and what's really important and not just what's what's urgent in front of you <clears throat> so it's to agree on a purpose or objective not just a goal and then to work on that oh and um my group uh, the or the group i'm in right now they're all working but Jan just had surgery, so she's at home. She didn't feel quite strong enough to be part of the group today, but she sent me a little statement about her experience that I could read. And she's one of the 60-ish people in the group. I first heard about mutual mentoring in a presentation like this one. I was interested in participating as I am a collaborator by nature 
and I saw it as an opportunity for group members to work together to help each other accomplish some sort of goal. As it turned out though, when I did join the group, I found myself in a place in my life where accomplished goals was not at the top of my mind. What I found there instead was unconditional support for the challenges that I was facing health-wise. <clears throat> I cannot express effectively the gratitude that I feel to this intergenerational group of women for this support that has seen me through some recent difficult times. So it's not just uh, the, uh, the benefits are whatever is happening in your life is supported by other people. So, you know, we don't live anymore in a little nuclear family with a rural community where everybody knows each other. We don't have those communities. So therefore it's really important to create one, to create a mutual mentoring group where we have that support that we don't naturally have because we live in simpler times where there's less mobility and, um, and more nuclear families. So, <clears throat> So what, what have I left out here on my notes? The diversity, the length of the group, and oh, and choosing people with diversity. You don't want people that have the same uh, network as you have, because I, I think I have a friend who says, if, one of, if two of us agree, one of us must be redundant. You know, you don't want people who think the same as you do. You want um, people from diverse career areas, diverse locations, uh, diverse, diverse cultural experience. So you bring, uh, if you have five people, you bring 500 different perspectives to anything that you're considering. You, the more diversity, the richer the, uh, the experience and, and the more helpful it's going to be. Um, <clears throat> Now, what else, what else did I miss? I think that's mainly it. And anything I've missed can come out in the, in the questions um, and things that you're thinking about. Because I'm thinking, you know, you could all have started a, a, and try it out, just explore it and, and do an experiment and try out one and see if it adds a positive thing to your life um, by the end of today. And you can get your get your group from people that you think of and acquaintances rather than friends because you already have the support of your friends and maybe even some people in this audience um, and Betty might arrange to let us share our emails and phone numbers and you could form groups with other people who are in the audience today if you're uh, if you don't have enough ideas and you can start with two and then add on other people I found that uh, Almost everybody I talked to said, could I join? So, so, you know, they can come as a guest and then they can go off and, and uh, start a group of their own. So that's that question. Oh, and the, oh, the other thing that the other function that it has uh, relates to uh, my career in transition work. You know, I was lucky enough and old enough to have a workshop with Bill Bridges, who wrote the book Transitions, which is still very well worth reading. It's the best basic theory on transition. <clears throat> but Bill Bridges, when I, I said to him, you know, what can I do to help people get through the wilderness when they're making a change? You know, this is the end of something and you have to make a good ending. And then there's this wilderness and then you start a new beginning. And the wilderness is the painful part where you're wandering around. You don't have the life you love because someone's died or your job has ended. So you don't have what you had. It's like now, COVID has wiped out the world as we know it, and we don't have the new world yet. So we're wandering around in the wilderness. So I said to Bill Bridges, what could I do to be helpful? Because I find that stage so painful. I didn't want other people to spend a long time in it. <laughs> so he said, just talk, 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 talk. They need to talk through something many, many times in order to process it and assimilate it and integrate it. They need to integrate the fact. And that's why funerals and things are so important. It's very alarming that people are moving away from, from end of life celebrations now because that celebration is the healing part of the transition. 
and we need to let people have time to talk. And one person probably doesn't want to listen to it all, so they need many people that they can talk to. And that's what these groups can do too. So when we meet, everybody gets to talk, but some meetings may, it may be one person more than another at a given time, depending on who needs the time at that particular meeting. And of course, meeting times are your choice too. You can meet every week, every two weeks, every three or four, whatever works for you. So um, I, I think that's all the things I had in my notes now. So, and I always make it so I can, uh, I can rush to the end in case I run out of time. So if I run out of time, my sort of little summary would be, um, um, to create that uh, substitute for the nuclear family and the small community. Create a place where you have support and give support to somebody else. And um, it's just occurred to me, um, because I've been, lately I've been listening to Thomas Hubel a lot, and he's doing a, a kind of practice to heal the trauma of the world. And he's saying that it makes a difference when we um, focus our energy together. So he's been holding global meetings around the world for 6,000 people who, who will um, meditate on the situation in Ukraine or wherever else. And, uh, and he said it's so important to heal the trauma of the past and the present. And so uh, I think it's a way to face those big issues too whereas one little grain of sand doesn't make any difference, but a lot of grains together can, uh, can build great cathedrals. So that's the other perspective on it. So I, I just sort of want to invite you to, uh, to listen to the thoughts you have and uh, create whatever works for you in order to have the, uh, the kind of future you want. And keep in mind that big 65 to 95 for you, where you have the extra 30 years. And so you plan on the last third of your life. It isn't just a retirement where you do the same thing for 30 years, but it's whatever you choose. Um, and I think people born today are likely to live to be 100. So the people coming after us uh, can for sure count on the 30 years. So I just thank you all for being here and being interested in, in making use of all generations. We have four generations for sure now if we live to be 100. And it's very important that they all contribute what they want to contribute and enjoy the fulfillment that they want to have. So thanks, thanks again for the opportunity to put in a bit. Thanks, Betty. Well, Lois, you are inspirational. Totally. And I'm sure everybody here would agree. One thing that I took away from your talk just now, um, I have a lot of intergenerational friendships in my life. Um, for example, tonight I'm going for dinner with somebody who's 40 years younger. So that is nothing new to me. But when you said choose diversity in your group, I think, I think that's really, really good. And that's kind of what I think, um, even though some of my friendships, they, they're from different spheres of influence. But um, I think that's really important. And it we have about five minutes, or let's say four minutes, if anybody has a question for Lois. Oh, and just before, like, as you're thinking about your question, um, oh, also, my mind goes all over the place. First of all, we've canceled the breakout rooms because it'll be too rushed. So we're not gonna do that. Um, Lois mentioned that if some of you wanted to do a mutual mentoring group with somebody else in this group, what you can do is put it in the chat. And what I will do, I will you know, study the chat box after the session today. And then I will email anybody who puts their email in there and says they want to be part of this, I'll email you as a group so that you can get connected. Okay. 
So now any questions or comments for Lois? And do share my email and phone number because it would give me great joy to be a little nudge along the way of anything ah, you want to create. I will do that. No comments or questions for Lois? You'll have to just speak up because I can't see everybody's screen. Yeah, I can say something quickly. Um, Lois, I just wanted to thank you for coming on and sharing your experience with it. I think it's so inspirational and honestly, so I am the part-time coordinator with the intergenerational speaker series that Jocelyn was talking about. And we wanna have mentoring opportunities and we want it to be more than just a goal and just something that's short term. And we want it to really support everybody and impact everybody in a way that they value. So just hearing your experience with it and hearing how it seems to have been quite a success for you is really inspiring and kind of gives me some hope for our mentor ring sessions. So thank you. All the best with what you're doing. It, it can make a great difference to people. I just wanted to say that it went along with this um, book that I started reading called How to Live Forever, The Enduring Power of Connecting the Generations. Um, if any of you know, it's by Mark Friedman and he runs um, Encore. I think it's Encore.com. Anyway, it's all about intergenerational um, relationship connections and exactly what you were saying, Lois, about that 65 to 95, it's it's creating, uh, almost he says like creating a second or third or fourth career in your life. It doesn't end just because you've retired from one. It's an awesome book. I just started reading it and I've been making notes and um, it's very inspiring. And so just like you are very inspiring. So thank you very much. So if you guys ever get a chance, look up Mark Friedman books. He's and, very much about intergenerational. And do subscribe to Encore. It's a good one. And, and there's yeah. They're very good ones uh, too, like changing changing the narratives. I think is a good one. Yes, and, and a saging international, pretty good. Yeah. Um, oh, perfect. No, yeah. So that's what we reminded me of when you were speaking of that, mm -hmm. making all those different connections. So yeah. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. You know, there's a lot of talk about living longer. So obviously, I'm in my third act here, and. I think I don't necessarily want to live a long life if I don't have the quality. And so I want to have a good quality of life. And I think having a mutual mentoring group, having intergenerational relationships and friendships helps us to improve the quality of our lives as we age. Okay, I am going, to, it's 10 to 12, and I don't want to keep you longer than 12 o'clock, so I'm going to share my screen, and we're just going to wrap up. Okay, so I've got a bunch of announcements that we're going to do, but first of all, I'm, I want to ask you, what has today's inspiration been for you? What are you taking away? So either you could, I'm going to leave like one or two minutes for this, either speak it out or put it in the chat. What are you taking away from today? Don't all speak at once. Oh, Aaron says, Lois, your emphasis on the difference between a purpose and a goal. Yeah, that was good. Uh, can you see me? I don't know. I can't tell with my phone. <laughs> yeah, we can see you. Okay. Uh, I want to say just the perspective shift of having each stage of your life being about being engaged and participating rather than an observer. So I thought that was a really amazing perspective shift and some really great ideas for ways to get people to connect as a whole in the community. 
because it's like she was saying it's not not just small towns every, everywhere now that everyone knows everyone that's a good one not just being an observer and also what i um am taking away from today is we need more role models in that older generation because people are living longer so they need role models anybody else At the end of this, I think Cindy's going to put a link in the chat for um, a feed, um, just to complete a survey to tell us, just to help us to um, find out what you like and what you would like in the future with these sessions. And she'll also be sending out an email tomorrow with the link in it. So please complete the survey so we can hear from you. Okay, let's talk about June 1st. As we know, that's why we're here. We talk about IG Day, which is June 1st. You know what we're doing. Um, so what I would like you to do, if you're a CORE, if you're a member on CORE, CORE Alberta, go and join the community of the Intergenerational Community of Practice group. And then in there, share what your plans are and um, post in the discussion thread. Let's get that going. Also, whatever you're doing on IG Day, there's um, a hashtag on Instagram, IG Day Canada. Post your, um, tag your posts for that, okay? We'd love to hear what you're doing. And you know what, what you're doing can be going for coffee with somebody from a different generation. It doesn't have to be a huge community event. Here's what um, Linkages is doing. We have a photo contest. So this photo contest is open to anybody all around the world. And during Global IG Week, we were promoting it. So what, and you or your, anybody that you know can enter a photo. This is how you do it. Post it to Instagram or email it to us. Your photo has to have the two generations, okay? And it also has to tell a story. And the board members from Linkages are actually going to be the judges. And there's a prize. There's a cash prize for first place. So please enter our photo contest. Can you see me in the photo? <laughs> Here's something new that we, the team for our intergenerational community of practice, are really excited about. We're going to start an IG cafe. A lot of times when we get your feedback, you tell us that you would like to be in breakout rooms and chat with each other, share ideas of what's going on in your and each other's communities. So we're going to provide these opportunities. These aren't going to be events like you've just attended. The first one we're going to have, it's on Wednesday, June 8th. So mark your calendar. I'm going to send out the link in the next little while um, from 1.30 to 2.30. It's going to be lots of interaction with each other. And we're actually um, having, a, after I say it's not going to be like our event, we're going to have a guest. We're collaborating with the elder abuse group on CORE. And Chantel, I can't remember her last name, Ottenbright maybe, she's going to come from that group and talk about, talk about um, what they do in their group and with elder abuse. And we're going to talk about how can we, how can intergenerational programming or relationships prevent elder abuse, abuse. So even if you're not interested in that topic, it's beneficial for intergenerational, it's beneficial for seniors and just to talk about intergenerational stuff. So come and join that. And we're going to have these regularly. And if you have any ideas with topics, just let me know. And then to wrap it up, we've talked about CORE a lot, collaborative online resources and education. And so this is for CORE Alberta. Go join CORE. This is our group, Intergenerational Linkages Community of Practice. So hopefully, we will see you there. And don't forget to mark your calendar for June 8th and um, join the discussion group. Anything I'm missing, anybody? 
want to thank everybody for coming. I love it when you come and attend our events and I love hearing what everybody is doing. So one last chance, if you would like to be part of a group that I'm emailing so that you can form some kind of a, a mentoring, mutual mentoring group or connect with each other, um, put it in the chat and I will be sending that out in the next few days. And then Cindy, you will hear from her tomorrow morning. She will be sending you the recording of today. Any last comments? Thank you for your coordinating. Oh, well, our pleasure. And I'm so, thank you again, Lois and Jocelyn. And of course, Leanne had to leave early. Thank you so much for presenting today. And thanks for everybody who participated and everybody who attended.